First, we'll establish our foot tripod. You want to make sure the big ball of the foot, little ball of the foot, as well as the heel are always implanted into the ground. Press the big toe. Press it down without curling the other toes. So keep that toe pushed down. You can try and lift it to make sure it's staying down. You should feel a little activation of your arch here. Now keep that toe down as you lift the other toes without lifting the whole foot up. Lift the toes, spread them, and then reach forward to widen your foot out as far as possible. Keep that toe depressed, squeeze the toes in without curling. So we'll squeeze together, lift, spread, reach. Squeeze, lift, spread, reach. And with the band to make sure that you're not lifting your toe, you can squeeze, lift, spread, reach. Now that we've learned the foot tripod, or at least understand its purpose, we're now going to do a few resets or mobility drills to help open the door to retraining better patterns. Lacking ankle dorsiflexion going forward is very common and causes compensations in your running or walking gait pattern. You can first test this by using a stick. Now along our shin, we're gonna find the midpoint between our ankle and our knee. Mine is right about here, and then I'll walk my fingers across this meaty muscle, and then right outside of it, I should feel some you know, rigidness or kind of like griminess. Right there, I'm gonna take a um, dry erase marker and mark that spot. Build your mobility tool of choice, like a lacrosse ball, place it on the dot, put some weight into it within your tolerance, and then use a combination of leg and foot movement to really blast that spot. Then recheck your range of motion. As a runner, if you're lacking adequate stability or mobility anywhere in your lower extremity, you're going to do different things to compensate around it. A common compensation is overusing the deep muscles of your lower leg. Those deep muscles insert into your feet. So if you find that you, you are always trying to stretch or you have tightness in your lower leg, you also have some toe curling or you found that tripod exercise relatively difficult, you may want to use this mobility strategy to get a nice reset before we load in some better information or a better pattern. <music> Here we are at part four of the runner series. In the last two videos, we gave you a couple options to help open up some ankle mobility, a reset, so to say. Now we're gonna reload some higher quality information so that we can train it and reinforce these patterns so we can actually be usable for your respective activity or sport. You'll create a space between your trunk and the ground by lifting your ribs up and pulling your shoulder down. Chin tucked, neck long. Now I want to press my elbow and my lower knee down actively into the ground. Once I have that, I want to lift this leg and push your heel back into the wall, thinking about keeping your heel connected with the back of your shoe, not kicking downward. And when you're driving into the wall, you want to make sure you're engaging this glute and you're not just dumping through your low back or arching your spine like this. Now that you've got the feel for what it's like to turn on the right muscles in a laying down position that gives you a fighting chance to get that feel, we're going to see if we can integrate that now into an upright standing position that starts to emulate running a little more. First you'll find yourself a wall or some support. The leg you're training will be straight onto the ground. Get your foot tripod. Then from here you want to stick your hips back like you're sitting back into a chair. Not coming down and forward or your knee travels over your toe. So you want to sit that booty back, make sure your back stays neutral. Your opposite leg is just back here as a support, like a kickstand. Think about taking that hip and sticking it out just slightly. Feel that glute turn on. In just a little bit, it should start to maybe ache or burn, but you should really feel it working. Now that you've got the position, you can simply hold for time, or you can add in some motion, such as slightly sitting back and down, and then coming back up. 
last part of the runner series, we're going to take everything we learned and put it all together now in a move that most closely emulates the stabilizing and movement function that we need for efficient running. First, assume the same position we did from last video, where we're going to sit our hips back, our knee is going to be behind our toes through our midfoot, ankle, knee, hip all on the line, find your foot tripod, and then you'll ideally want to grab like a furniture slider for the opposite leg. Go back toward, um, for like in a clock, what, I don't know my time very well, 8 o'clock. So this leg's going to go back toward 8 o'clock and we're going to use our arms. You should start to feel that glute burn or at least become, you know, it's working. Now if you've got this down, you can start to move your leg in different directions within the clock. Lastly, if you think you're a stability badass, you can add some challenge to this function.